give a quick intro on uh, what is Local First and why I care about it. There's actually like a bunch of different talks that I could give about the same subject. So today I'm giving like one possible framing. Uh, hopefully it resonates with you. Uh, I'm, I'm Johannes, already mentioned it. Uh, I'm one of the founders of Prisma. I really like DevTools and find myself like constantly kind of being drawn again to trying to improve like how data management works for application developers. But I also like music a lot. Um, and so uh, together with Jeffrey, uh, we've been exploring a new local first way of building, uh, building applications and doing state management. And uh, particularly uh, in the, with focus on building an actual app. So not just building some technology in a vacuum, but with the goal of building a real app for real users uh, as part of that, I'm building a universal music app, uh, like a music app that's supposed to like work with Spotify, SoundCloud, etc. I won't talk too much about what this is. Uh, we're going to see a demo a little bit later by, by Jeffrey, but I just wanted to motivate. I'm not just here to like talk about local first in a vacuum. I'm actually like building something with local first uh, for the last two years, and my primary goal is to build a product. Uh, and local first is just the best way to, to get there for me. Um, so yeah, in this talk, I want to give you a brief perspective of uh, why, the why behind the local first architecture. And then we have Jeffrey uh, to kind of take over the second part uh, of, of the talk, which is like how you do it, the local first state management, particular with a project called Riffle that, that we've been incubating. And um, yeah, but before I go into the why of local first? Uh, I think we have a pretty uh, pretty diverse set of, of people here in terms of backgrounds, interests, etc. So I'm very curious, like, who has no idea about what local first is, just like sounded cool, and, like you wanted to come? All right, cool. Thanks, thanks for your. <laughs> um, no, this is great. This is particularly like my this talk. I think will hopefully set a bit of a foundation. Since later, I think we'll we'll hear a lot more about like how it's done, etc. Going into the deeper. Uh, on the flip side, uh, who is actually building a real app in a local first way? Oh wow, that that is like more more people than I expected, uh, and maybe in between who is thinking of like building an app in a local first way or like wants to learn more in this way. All right, very nice. Okay, so hopefully uh, the, the last group of people can be like take some inspiration away from what, what you learned today or the people who are already building local first apps. Uh, maybe you learn some tricks from others and like the entire point of this is also that we talk to each other in the breaks or afterwards uh, and learn from each other. I think there is like more open questions and unexplored things than what we already know, but I think it's super promising and super exciting. Uh, and yeah, so I want to share with you a li little bit of motivation why uh, I think the local first architecture is really cool. And I want to share it from a perspective that I've spent uh, kind of five years of my at least five years of my life with uh, before, uh, which is a more traditional like web app. Uh, like the typical way how, it, how it's built. Um, so, and I think a lot of people in this room actually have like, for example, Adam with Heroku. I think this is kind of like the foundation that Heroku enabled, kind of that you can build a street tier uh, web app, etc. And I think most tools that we use nowadays are built in this way. Maybe it's not quite street tier, maybe it's like end tier with like a microservice uh, beast behind it. But fundamentally, we have like a fairly, probably fairly thin client talking to an API server, then talking to like other things. Um, we might use React here, doesn't, doesn't really matter. So this is the typical use case how most apps, I would argue, are built this way today. Um, but I think with this approach, we might run into some problems. Uh, one problem could be, that the app is too slow. There's a whole range of like possible approaches how to improve it, um, Prisma Accelerate <laughs> being, being one of those. But I might argue uh, that there could be like a whole different way how you could build your app in the first place. 
um, where like, yeah, you just change the data architecture that you might not run into those problems in the first place. And so this won't apply to all use cases in sort of like a blanket way, but for some apps, it might be a really great fit. Um, but yeah, so if you're building an app in this sort of like more three tier way, I think we all know uh, what a possible solution to this is, which is uh, we do caching. Um, and with the caching, whoops, sorry. Uh, I guess we're, yeah. So we introduced caching um, and that's kind of like solves, kind of solves the problem for, for the user. The app is faster again, uh, but as we introduce caching, maybe you can change some data on the client. So we also take, need to take care of that path through optimistic updates. So users happy again. As a developer, we know like caching doesn't come for free. We've got to think about cache and validation, et cetera, a whole bunch of complexity. But OK, fine. So we've introduced caching. The app is more bearable now again. However, now we've seen it before. Uh, Steve needed to jump on his hotspot. Sometimes there isn't internet. So a lot of apps also um, don't work uh, like don't work offline in the first place. And there's approaches, etc. But fundamentally, even if you've got a service worker running, etc., and host your assets, then the most important part, arguably, is still not there. Your data. So what do you do here? Well, you introduce more caching. So you cache like more and more data that it works offline. Uh, you got to do even more sophisticated optimistic updates, et cetera. And like the, the, it gets really, really complex to just maintain all of this. And uh, let's say you want to go even further. Product manager says like, hey, we need uh, some collaboration workflows in, in our applications. Um, and so, OK, like one user wants to change something, another user wants to change something uh, at the same time. There might be a conflict. So now you got to like scratch your head like, OK, so this three tier way of like how we've built this this app doesn't quite work anymore you do a bunch of research and you realize aha we could use something like crdts uh but that's like reconciling this with like how this app was built uh originally is kind of a bit of a yeah a mismatch and just adds and adds complexity to the way how you build the app so i've tried that and uh, yeah, this was kind of my, my experience. And this is where I've like, at the same time learned about the idea of local first and a different way of, of building the app. Um, and I would say that I've focused so far mostly on the state management part on the, of the story. And I think this is really the core of the problem that the, the state management part is super hard. It's very complex by every potential solution that we've introduced to the system. We've made everything more complex, potentially more buggy. The cache invalidation is just uh, gets really, really complicated. You might still have like inconsistent state. You need optimistic updates, and then the cherry on top, if you want to introduce something like data syncing, it's just like a mismatch to the way how we've originally built the system in terms of the data flow, etc. So. I'd argue there's like two main observations that I think can lead us to to a different place. One is um, as like the, the source of most evil in applications like uh, that state is distributed. Um, like in our case, the three tier in the three tier app, some of the most important state comes from a database living further away from you. You need to get it in, but that state is fundamentally distributed. Um, so that's a huge part. And the other, what we've already seen, uh, that the way how we tried to um, improve the situation is by us bringing a little database into the application. And as every step along the way, we try to like uh, solve the problems but by making that database bigger. And I think that actually has led us in an interesting direction. And the idea of local first is really to embrace that. What if the primary database of, of our applications is in the client, we really embrace that and we flip the state management problem a little bit on its head and we have a different take also on the distributed uh, systems problem. Um, and um, yeah, I, I found this uh, quote really interesting where someone said like, 
when I've worked on any kind of distributed systems, including systems as simple as a web app with a front end and a back end code, probably upwards 80% of my time is spent on things I wouldn't need to do if things weren't distributed. This really rings true for me and for, for apps I've worked on. And that's why it's so delightful to build Overtone in this local first way. Um, and so maybe this, this quote also speaks to you. And yeah, here's like a solution proposal, uh, a diagram I've tried to describe how a local first architecture could look like. The idea is really like you have your, your app client, like you have your app here, you might have like a different uh, collaborating user over there. Um, this database here in your app is really the, the important one. This is where like most of the source of truth of most data originates. And for a lot of apps such as TL Draw, this works really well. And the server in the middle here uh, is really like, can be much smaller, much simpler uh, compared to the other pieces. And the way, like this does no longer need to be the source of truth for like how data flows. The role of a server is much more like to facilitate uh, that one client gets to know of the data of the of the other client. Uh, you can use CRDTs to help with that, etc. Um, so there's many ways how you can design this. Uh, this is sort of like a simplified, uh, like a simplified diagram of a certain kind of of app. And yeah, the underlying ideas is to move as much responsibility of the uh, of the overall system into the client, make the server simpler. Um, and yeah, kind of separate out the responsibilities to have a principled approach to the distributed systems problem, like use technology like CRDT for it, and have kind of like a nice simplified system locally where it can assume like, hey, I have all of my data and then build a great user experience. Um, if you want to learn more about this, if, if this is kind of like the first time you're kind of hearing about this, those ideas, uh, this is one of the, the canonical articles for this. Uh, Adam is one of the, the, um, the co-authors of, of this. This has like all the ideas uh, really well written, better than I could give it justice here. So I would really, if you haven't read this, uh, please give this a, give this a read. Um, to briefly summarize the benefits of Local First, um, at least from, from my perspective, uh, you don't have to take my word for it. Like, feel free to discover them for, for yourselves. Uh, I think fairly big claims, but uh, me building um, an actual app with it, uh, this has really been, been true for me. I would say from a user perspective, Local First really helps you to build faster apps. Uh, I've learned over the time of building, uh, trying to build a fast app, how slow most other apps that I've used actually are like my tolerance has actually uh, gone gone down so local first really helps you build fast apps um, local first makes it much easier to build apps that are always available when you're traveling when you're like somewhere we don't have perfect connectivity or even like use a use a service use a tool while their servers might be down for for maintenance or something um, it's also that local first tools are much more like they, they're still around. Like you can still use Winamp today, but you can't use like another service that shut down like two two months ago. Um, Google Domains, uh, collaborative. Uh, I think this is becoming more and more important that we have like we're using a tool for ourselves, but we also want to collaborate with others. Um, adding collaboration on top, particularly real time collaboration, is really difficult. Um, so I think embracing that from the beginning is really worth it. And then also privacy for people who do care about privacy. I care about privacy. I want to have as much of the data really like sit in my machine, maybe get synced to another of my machine, but not like live somewhere like openly in, in the cloud, uh, ideally end to end encrypted, etc. Again, local first is a much better principle for that. And then you could say, okay, great. Those are great goals, but uh, it's probably much harder to, to build this way. But uh, I've seen like, no, it's quite the contrary. The architecture overall gets much simpler. Um, you have the distributed systems problem. Some other people who are way smarter than me uh, can build systems for that, such as CRDTs, et cetera. And I can focus on like what I cared about deeply, which is a, the, a great user experience. Um, it's overall easier to develop, easier to test, to debug. 
Um, there's some really delightful developer experience flows that we're also going to see from, from Jeffrey. And um, yeah, that would kind of be like a pitch uh, why I think local first uh, is an interesting way to, to build an app. Doesn't work for, like you wouldn't, you have a hard time building Facebook with it, uh, but you have a really great time building something like TLDraw with it or Linear with it, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, that would be my little introduction for, for local first. And I want to hand it over to Jeffrey.